Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So down in Arizona for the winter, really enjoying our time here in the southwest desert. Nice and sunny. I'm back with an uh, update on this SOK battery that I'm reviewing. So I had a video out showing how I've got it wired into my uh, truck's toolbox power station that I had built. And I decided this was a really good application for this because this has heating pads inside the battery. So if the temperature drops below freezing, it can still charge um, without hurting the battery. What happens is if it's a below freezing, if the cells get in there, get inside there are below freezing, um, there's a sensor in there that will shut off charging. But when you apply charged power to it, there's little pads in there that will heat up the cells to a point that goes above freezing, then it'll work. So it's ideal for really low temperature applications, like if you're in really, really cold winters. But because I have this mounted in my truck, there's no heating at all. Um, so if I get in an environment, it'll, it'll protect the cells in that. Anyway, so far it's performed very well. I just have a, a small solar panel on here and I can plug more solar panels into it. I have a DC to DC charger installed to run off my alternator if I want to charge it using the truck or I can also have a, a small charger that I use when I'm on shore power. So it's worked quite well as a, an extra, extra way to uh, get power when we're off grid. And also it runs all my uh, dash cams. I've quite a few cameras on the truck for remote monitoring for 24 seven. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna actually pull it out and we're gonna do a low temperature test. I'm gonna put it into my little portable freezer, bring its temperature way down, and then we'll test and see um, if the charging pads are working in there and it will actually heat up the cells to the point where they will start accepting charge again. I also think I'm going to take it apart and we'll look at the build quality inside. I imagine it's going to be pretty good. I have reviewed the SOK brand in the past and was quite impressed with their construction and build quality. It's another reason I decided to uh, take them up on the offer of the review. The battery was provided free of charge, but they're not paying me for the video. So let's get to it. Well, unfortunately, my cunning plan was thwarted. This actually wouldn't fit into my portable deep freezer. It's a little, just a little bit, few centimeters too wide. So I'm gonna have to peel the top off and uh, do it a different way. Use some uh, ice water, find the temperature sensor, and then we can test out the heating pads that way. So looks like we just take those screws off and the top should come off. Right away, I noticed a nice improvement with the lid. On the previous model, the BMS, or battery management system, was screwed onto the lid. So when you opened the lid, there was wires hanging out, and you had to be very careful when you're lift, lifting the lid. This one's just flat piece. Looks like there's this black doohickey here. I believe that's probably a one-wave um, valve to let any air out of it, equalize the, the pressure inside and prevent probably moisture from developing inside the battery. I'm just going to find the a low temperature sensor uh, probe in here. I think there's some plastic here we can pull off. Wow, first impression, very impressed. You can see even the terminals here, there's nice big flat bars that go instead of wires that, that uh, go between the terminals. Nice. Anyway, this looks like it's the high temperature sensor says 50 Celsius on it. And I believe this is going to be the low temperature one here, so it's quite handy. And then we've got our balancing leads there. And somewhere buried in here is going to be the heating pads. That was just glued in place in a little plastic tube there. But I think I got it out enough that I can get into, into some uh, ice water to cool it down so we can test out these uh, low temperature heating pads. So for a test I've hooked up a charger here. It's charging at 60 amps. Clamp on meter is telling me 60 amps. So what I expect to happen 
when I cool this down below freezing with this ice water that has some salt in it so it can go a little cooler than freezing, it should stop charging at 60 amps and switch to maybe 8 or 10 amps when the, when the heating pads turn on. So let's give that a try. There we go. Yeah, you can see it switched to 8.4 amps. So now instead of charging the lithium battery cells, it's heating the pads. Let's take that off. And it should go back once this gets heated up past freezing again. Let's put my hand on it there. There we go. So low temperature operation is working as advertised. Self heats itself. So now I'm going to take it apart. These are sort of known to be very user serviceable. So if you need to replace a cell that's gone bad or the BMS board or anything else, it comes apart quite easily compared to a lot of the cheaper end stuff on the market that's kind of put together with tape and plastic sheeting and stuff. This thing is built from the ground up with solid metal. The case is metal and you can see lots of metal supports in there and then everything is bolted in place. So these look like maybe they're a, maybe a 10 mil socket. Just added a little bit of a protection to my wrench here. I don't have any fiberglass wrenches so just out of an abundance of caution you don't want to short between negative and positive or any of the cells or you're going to get a large amount of sparks and you may uh, destroy a wrench <laughs> may cause a fire too so just as a safety note anyway i'm going to take off these uh, bolts and slowly pull apart these layers see we see how far we can go see if we can find those heating pads in there and kind of get an idea what kind of cells are being used in this battery so four bolts got this off and this off the negative terminal and i was able to slide the BMS, rather than in other types, the BMS is on top of the cells. This sl slides right down, and then it's against the, the metal case. So it has lots of uh, cooling capability, and it's away from your lithium cells. Very nice design. And everything unplugs. There's even a plug on this red lead here. And then over here, it looks like these two red wires are going down and I can see where they go in between the cells and that must be the heating pads coming off of there. So let me pull that BMS right out and give you a look. There we go. Model SK4S120 website. I believe they make their own BMS boards in-house if I remember right. Recommended charge current max 70 amps. Recommended discharge current max 120. Nice heavy aluminum heat sink on that. Nice. And you can see the two temperature sens sensors there. And they're just kind of double sided taped in place up here. So we'll continue peeling layers what this fiber board is up here but there's the cells there and you can see this bolts through pretty thick heavy aluminum bus bars there and then it looks like they're laser welded to the the cell so I imagine if you purchased a cell from them and they would come with that already on and you would just basically change it and bolt it right in place closer look at the bars here. They appear like they are copper. I can see copper color underneath whatever they're coated with. Maybe nickel of some sort. And then these are the bolts. And they look like they are a self-locking type. Which is nice. You don't have to have extra washers. Locking washers in there. And so far they've all been tight. Okay, strip down easy peasy. 
So this uh, board is actually a, a circuit board for the balance leads, it looks like. They come in there, and then they go to each cell. That's a really smart idea. It really makes everything slick up there. Got all a bunch of tiny wires going everywhere. Closer look at the terminal here. I've always really liked these terminals compared to some of the ones they, they use that you feel like you're going to break them if you tighten them up. Also, they included nice long uh, bolts with them. A lot of the manufacturers I complain because they include the shortest bolt. You can maybe get one, maybe two lugs on there after that. Not much else. This one you could get a few. Although it's not good to stack up your leads, but uh, sometimes you have to when you're putting it in. Just kind of a pain to have to go and get your own own bolt. So yeah, good marks for the terminals on the battery. And this just slid out with ease. Look at that. No glue and sticky foam or anything, just comes out nicely. Like I say, these are meant to be serviced if you need to. Nice construction. There's where the heating pads are. They seem to go through the two end batteries so they can heat these two and these two cells, four cells in this battery. And there's the bottom of the case. I seem to have the bottom looks like it can be unscrewed as well. But you have to be careful with these screws if you put them on a soft, put this on a soft material and be dragging it around, it might scratch. Anyway, let's peel apart. At least try to get one cell and have a look at what these pads look like in here. Four more screws, six more screws, and the bottom comes off. And then this, you can slide this metal protector cage off. And then we're down to the lithium cells. Looks like they're encased in a plastic here. Wow, how cool is that? Plastic just lifted off, and then the cell just lifted off. Just like that. No glues or anything. Awesome. There it is. Looks like it just sticks in place. Neat. It looks like, yeah, it's a little bit of stickiness to it. But if you had to change that pad or change that cell, very easy to reuse. You're not ruin, ruining the pad at all. You could get that off very easily. Neat. Looks like they connect together there and then up to the BMS board for the power. Cool. What a nicely designed battery. I could take this part and change a cell, put it back together probably in you know like a half hour and not really risk ruining anything. Did a resistant measurement of the heating pad and came out 3.6 ohms each pad. If anybody's curious, must be some sort of maybe foil coil in here. Cells look very pristine. No bubbling or anything. Nice bright blue color. So, must be very nice Class A new cells in there. There you go, went back pretty darn easy. Well, I 
thing is, uh, as far as tightening those uh, bolts onto all the terminals, I think I'm going to maybe ask uh, the support what uh, they recommend for the inch pound on the torque on those bolts. I've actually ordered myself an inch pound torque wrench because I'm doing so much work with the batteries lately, and you, you want to know how much is the correct torque on all these terminal bolts. Just doing a quick test here, make sure everything is working again in there after that complete disassembly. And I'm putting 31.67 amps into it. This is a charger that I have for lithium. It shows 30 amp lithium mode right now, so it seems to be operating correctly. Although when I put it together, um, the charger wouldn't uh, wake it up. I actually had to put it into a 12 volt supply mode and supply the 12 volts to it to wake up the BMS and then I could switch to the charging mode and everything is good again. Sometimes lithium batteries if they get discharged too low um, they can uh, need help certain they need a certain type of uh, charger to uh, wake them up so that's a concern sometimes when you're getting batteries to uh, keep that in mind. So I'll drop a link in the description to the SOK battery site here if you want to see more of their batteries. Also, if you want to learn more about this uh, battery that I pour down, it's the 12 volt 280 amp hour lithium battery with a built-in heater and Bluetooth. Not a bad price, $1149, considering it's uh, 280 amp hours, obviously very good build quality. But you can find out to uh, do a deep dive into some of the specs here. You also can download the spec sheet and user manual from this link. Anyway, I'll be back with another video in the future. Um, I'd like to test its capacity and do some, uh, you know, charge and discharge tests with it. But I uh, just wanted to tear it down and see how it works inside with the heater system. Looks pretty good. Till next time, Ray from Love RV and Boat. Cheers, guys.